All right, how do you fix it? So we're going after this clutch on this 93B D21 pickup, and it's a four-wheel drive, and we got these tens. And they're all around in here. Sometimes you have to cut the carpet just a little bit and get some room because I ain't forcing my hand because I've cut my fingers multiple times trying to force my hand in these places. And it just it's not worth it for me. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get these set of bolt. There's should be two. I think there's one in the middle on each side. Here and here, and there's two on each side in the front, like here and here. All right, so with those out, I'm just gonna lift up out of here as I got these unscrewed already. So there's four bolts on this one. There's two 12s, two 13s, which is probably usually four, four 12s, but I, I, it, everything changes for each vehicle. So you want to make sure what you got here. So you have this plastic thing here that goes in and goes into place. So there is like a gasket of RTV around it. So that's what we'll do with like a Yama wand or something like that after we get back together. So just gotta lay this over here and we're gonna raise it up. Okay, so we're underneath and then so you have, the big thing with this job is you have these torsion bars, right? So you gotta, Loosen these. This is one that tighten it down. This will loosen. So you gotta measure the length of this before you do any of this because you have to take these off to get this out and this out. So that's the biggest thing about this job. But right now I've already had my drive line loosened. These were 17s. And get those off. Now we're gonna go after these. Just hold on to my carrier bearing, which I think these are 17s also. So I got my ratchet back in there and this bolt and my extension. And you can see it's got more room. And I sprayed it WD-40 and now everything's moving a little lot, lot easier. So we're gonna go off to this side, look at the other side. And it should pop out and we can get our front drive line out. I'm just gonna have to pull back here. There should be some gear oil that might come out of that back transfer case. So the front video, our front drive line, it's these 14s. I've already broken free. I put a pipe in between here or break a bar. The whole light broke these free. Alright, so now that's out. I like marking it green dot towards the front. And now we got it up here. So what do we go after next? So I'm gonna detorsion these torsion bars. So just wanna be safe when you do this kind of stuff because they has torsion, that's why they're called torsion bars. So what I like to do is I've already measured it. Or I've already measured it, so I'm gonna take down here, and right two and a quarter. So this is a 17, I've already loosened this. I'm just gonna back this off like crazy now. And I'll go up to the bottom one. Loose. Pick those up. They're out. Because you don't want to leave that connected. So we're just going to spin that out. And you just pull it out and put it out of the way. Too, like that. And if you look at it, there is a locator, so there's a certain way it will go in. Just think of that when you go back together. And so, yeah. This that clip there. So just leave it on there for easy rear assembly. Leave that there and pull it off. So you got these two 14s holding in the slave cylinder here you want to take out. So I had to take the exhaust out because it's gonna give you a lot more room to remove things. Okay. So we got this is our four-wheel drive linkage. So we go ahead and we got our 12s. All these 12s lose. And then you have this 10 here. And you should, in theory, we should be able to just pop this off. And it should be like splined in there because it's like a pinch bolt. I'll, 
I'll work on that and I'll let you know if it works or not. But I'll get rest of this. So, I have a hard time getting this out, so we're gonna just drop it down with that attached and see what happens, because you got one more flop. There's a washer here that I took out, and this here, the through bolt. So, that support our trans, and then we're gonna go after this bracket here. Take out these bolts here. Right Up through here to 17. Like that. And then we're going to get this other one. And then there's two. Four. So you have four 14s all together. You want to get your socket on this, and there's a backup wrench on top that you want to make sure, but don't pinch your hand against the frame because it does hurt. Oh, this is loose now. Yeah, this is. Now we're gonna go after these here, the 17s. 17s, this is already no tension. And the 17s on this side, so I should let it down. I have it supported with a jack. All right, so you wanna make sure, I have a quick shot here in a second. You wanna take the front torsion nuts out to hold the bars in the front A-arms. You wanna take those out or those will never come out. So this is what I'm talking about here. These hold my torsion bars into place with the A-arms. So you wanna make sure that you undo these bolts and it should allow that I got my bell housing bolts, and I got a bolt coming in from the front, which is going to be a pain in the butt. And I think that's it. All right, so we're looking at the bell housing bolts here. They're 14s, and there's some 14s that come from the other side, and there's a hidden 14 above the starter, so you want to make sure. And there's a hit, there's a hidden another 14 below the starter, and it's just a little short bolt. But they go all the way around, cascade around, and there's a couple, there's a one that holds the wiring harness into place. And then you should be able to see a little better view up here up top. But that's what you gotta go after. So sometimes you gotta go away from your work a little bit and some extra extensions. You probably need like three or four foot of extension helps get to some of these bell housing bolts. So right here is the hidden bolt I'm talking about that's underneath the starter right there. It goes through and holds this shield on. So I grab a ratchet and come in from the front like this, and you should be able to get good access to these bolts. So right here where my hand is, there's another bolt, two bolts that come in from the other side on the driver's side. So here, coming from the other side, there's another bolt. This is an actual bell housing bolt. It's a long bolt, and it's you got to move your starter around in order to get to it kind of see it right here but it's easier to try to come from the other side and feel it with your hand and guide your socket onto it because you kind of see where my fingers are that's where it is it's in a bad spot so here i am we got the bolt i'm just on top of the starter here so now we got that you want to make sure your transmission is supported and you can break it loose like i've got here uh, and it's kind of a pickle because it gets hung up on the flywheel so you gotta there's a lot of weight on the rear end Here's a view of the fly or the clutch itself. So we're gonna go ahead and take all these, I think they're 12s, take all these 12s out. So we got this apart here, so we can see down here, you can actually see the cracks and all the blue checks. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to find a new flywheel for about a hundred bucks. It's usually what they cost now. And put that in there, customer supply zone clutch. And we're gonna put it back together. But you can also see some oil, so we're gonna check our rear main also. You can see the bushing. The bushing, you just you have to sweat the new one in order to put it in place. All right, so we're gonna blast this off these 14s. Just kind of leave it hanging there. Oh, you can see here in the video that there's all this oil down here, you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this rear main seal because it does look like it is leaking. We have other sources of oil. You know, it's coming from down up here. Maybe you got some valve cover stuff in here, but it'd be stupid not to replace it if it looks like this with oil's accumulating. It's just because you don't want to have to do this all over again. Just replace this when it goes bad, bad. If it's just leaking like this, it's not that detrimental of losing oil, but when you lose a whole bunch all at once, you have to pay. So here I'm going after the bushing. I'm wearing it down on one side and other sides to make it thinner so that I can hit it with a chisel and like turn it into like a horseshoe so then it will come out. So I got it wore down and just get the little pieces out and get it out. 
And so once we get it out, you can see that I wore it down on one side and I was able to fold it in on itself and then it popped right out. Alright, so this is our new bushing. You have like this reservoir that's like floating on the top here. And that's just 1040. Try to do this with one hand. Now push, and you'll see it sweat through. It's starting to get porous, you see it sweating through. And that's how you make sure your bearing doesn't go bad. So I tap my bushing just a little bit with a hammer, not too much, just enough to get it snug in there. Then I use my bushing driver to get it in place. And I drive it in and I observed where the other one was before I took it out so I kind of know where it needs to be. Not too deep, not too far out, it's just, just Goldilocks, it's perfect. So I like putting a little bit of grease in here in the pilot area just to make sure you got extra grease. So working on the rear main here, you just use a screwdriver and a pick. You can just get underneath it. Try not to scar or mar the riding surface of the crank itself. Try to go outwards like I'm doing here and then it just pushes out. You just gotta go around, go around. And you know, it's vice versa for putting it back in and you have to kinda watch it as it folds. You don't wanna push it in where the ruin the spring. You just wanna kinda slightly put it in there. So. Here's a new one. I'm going to tap it a little bit with a hammer on the outside. And then I use um, a driver for it, but I just couldn't do it with two hands and film at the same time. But using the hammer to get in seat is nice and flush. It's not overhanging. It's uniformed all around, so that's going to work. This is our new throw this is our old throw up bearing, so we want to make sure that you have these little clips down here and you just pry them out with a screwdriver and they, they pry up and out. And then once we get that off, then we can go ahead and pull our whole bearing assembly off because there's like a housing that holds it on to the output shaft here. Or, yeah, or input shaft. And then we'll see what we need. So I got the how I got the bearing in the vise, and then the housing is what I'm trying to drive out with my punch here. So I'm not going to show you because I can't do it with two hands, but that's basically what you're going to do is you're just going to hit it with a hammer on each side back and forth. And then here's a new one. I got it on the surface here and just drove it in and everything worked out. I drove it on the hardened surface, not the bearing surface. So I went ahead and I put some anti-seize on the shaft here and we're going to go put some on the tip of the shaft here and on the inside of my housing here for my throw out bearing. Just slide it in. And you kind of like put your clips over the fork on each side. It's kind of a pickle to do because you got to do one side, do the other side, and kind of slide it in. It can be a hard thing to do, but it will happen. Just try not to break your clips. All right, so now with that's in place, it slides up and down. You have the clips on, and that's the way it's supposed to work. So now. We can go ahead and put our flywheel back into place. All right, so we got this into place now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of red Loctite on all my bolts and put them into place. And then we're going to torque this down to 80 foot pounds. And just do like a star pattern. Just want to do the star pattern and it'll be forced down like it's supposed to and have the right clamping force. So there's my new clutch disc. I have it in place of the pilot bearing or pilot um, tool. So then we're going to try to line up our clutch pressure plate here. We're going to get it in place and we're going to put our 
12 millimeter bolts back into place. We're gonna torque it down. I think it was 20 foot pounds is what I remember it was. So we're gonna torque it down to that and do like a start pattern. And then once we're all said and done, we're gonna pull our tool out. All right, with everything done now, I'm just going to take this transmission and just shove it in there and we're going to be done. So I just got to go back in and just kind of go back and forth, make sure my shifter from my four-wheel drive is up in that hole as it goes up. And in order to spline it, I'm going to have to support my rear end because it has the transfer case on it, which is a lot of weight, which doesn't like it. So I have to like do some moving back and forth of the engine and the transmission to line up the hole just right so that it splines in it's it's a pain in the butt it's not an easy job um so i think that's that's where that is and you can see here i'm lining up making sure it goes up here i took out too many bolts for my shifting bracket here this black one if you take a zip tie and zip tie it in that place it'll keep it up in place that's what i did after after the fact here so the other thing I gotta tell you about is the torsion bar tensioning. It's where the bolt go through. Um, so you wanna make sure when those go in the place, you wanna make sure that they're hanging down and that they're not flush against the metal. If they're flush against the metal, they're not gonna tension anything. And you wanna make sure that you're, they're splined correctly in the front A arm, which is the biggest part when you go back together. So I think I'm gonna leave it at this. I'm gonna show you a couple more things, but I'm gonna leave it at this. All right, Fixer, so this transmission's back in. Didn't film any of it because it's just a big jostle. I left this detached. I was able to drop it back up in there like it's supposed to be. But just working everything back and forth, I ended up having to use bolts that were longer for this side and the other side after I got the top into place and then kind of suck it in a little bit. It's a pain in the butt because you have all this weight in the back and I've never taken the transfer case off one of these because if it's like the older style of the transmissions like in this, you know, late 80s they're all connected so there's like bearings and stuff and it's, it's a little pragmatic um but so that's where we're at so right now we're gonna pull this stuff back together and go the other way with it i think i'm gonna leave that to you guys because that's pretty straightforward because if you know showing everything else but with the exhaust out of the way i gotta fix that get some gaskets and i think that's it so this is what i was talking about with the torsion arms you gonna make sure that they're down further than this because this is what it looks like after the set correctly you don't have too much overhanging that's two and a quarter inches and that's two and a quarter inches Fixer good Fixer 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 Fixer